How you doing? Thanks for the dispatch. Yes. Um, how much confidence does it give your group, your running backs, to run behind that offensive line? And what is that offensive line doing so well right now? Well, there's no doubt about it. Uh, anytime you have a veteran offensive line that, that – um, is kind of playing with the quality that they're playing with right now. It just instills all types of confidence in the running back. You know, it just really forces that running back not to worry about uh, first level of the defense, just trust that their players are going to get their job done. And, and now they can kind of just read through that first level and kind of take a peek and see what's going on at the second and third level of the defense. And anytime you're able to do that as a running back, it allows you to anticipate your reads a lot quicker. And it doesn't happen unless you, you have that confidence in your offensive line. So that is why we're, you know, getting the explosives and uh, the, the nice chunks of yards right now in the run game is purely because of the offensive line. You know, so it's been phenomenal for us this year. When you study them, is there something they're doing in particular that's really good, and especially playing a very good run defense this week? Well, they're just rocking off the ball. You know, uh, they, they don't have any indecision. There's no hesitation in their first step. You know, and, uh, and they're getting a lot of looks, too. I mean, they're getting a lot of twist, a lot of uh, movement by the defense, some gap exchange and things like that. So they're just rocking off the ball, very confident in their targets. Um, and once they get engaged, they're moving people. And that is a great formula for productive running. Stan, we've heard a couple times about with Carlos spending those first few weeks running with the scout team. What was the benefit on or off the field for him going through that, that work? Well, first of all, you know, I wish I can raise every back that way. I wish I could send every back down to the scout team for a few weeks because um, the, positives, the positives of it are, um, number one, you're going to play on contact for sure. You're playing against a younger offensive line, and you're not getting the movement that we're talking about uh, for the first question there. But um, things are not very clean, so you're now you're – you're uh, forced to really en enhance the, the skill set of playing on contact, playing through contact, uh, spinning off of things, and you know, staying true to your footwork and your landmark. I mean, for that, it is a positive. It is a negative in some respects, too, because, um, because it's not clean most of the time. Um, you get a back that comes back to a starting offensive line, and sometimes he's hesitant. You know, he doesn't quite have the timing uh, together. But, um, Carlos Hyde, having played with this offensive line for the last couple of years, I mean, he knows them, and they know each other inside out. So uh, he was able to make that adjustment from the scout team back over uh, to that starting team and, and get a rhythm rather quickly. Um, but I think mentally it was an unbelievable uh, advantage for him because, number one, you know, being a starting tailback a year ago and having them play a uh, backup role in the service role to this football team on the scout team, um, made him hungry, made him extremely hungry, uh, made him not take for granted the opportunities that he has uh, in front of him, you know. So that that was the biggest lesson, I believe, for Carlos. Yeah, uh, Stan, uh, we were talking with uh, Todd Herman last week, and I asked him what was one of the things y'all definitely want to get better at offensively mm -hmm. during the break. And he said one of the things they've really, y'all have studied is, Y'all are a better team when you're hitting receivers on the run as opposed to like maybe some of the hitches and bubble screens and curls y'all been doing. Sure. How much did y'all work on that, and what what do you see coming out of that uh, sort of emphasis maybe more on hitting guys on the run? Yeah, you know, it's just some, it's, it's all correlated. You know, uh, to throw the ball effectively, uh, you've got to run the ball effectively, and that's been our philosophy. So um, there's got to be some things that we can create uh, out of the backfield um, by way of personnel, um, uh, our footwork and our landmarks, if we can keep it moving and kind of get that to bleed in over to our play action game uh, to be able to do some things where our receivers are still on the move. Um, Iowa uh, does a phenomenal job of playing great disciplined defense. You know, uh, we know where they're going to get lined up, but um, we're going to have to be very, very smart on um, running our receivers through their zones because they're a very physical football team. But um, um, usually you get the receivers on the move a lot more versus teams that play man coverage when you're trying to separate and create some space and things of that sort. And uh, Wisconsin does, I mean, um, Iowa does that, uh, you know, a little bit. So it's just really calling the right play at the right time. And, you know, uh, but we are going to practice that because our receivers are at their best when they can catch it on the move, no doubt. And one quick follow. Uh, you're our offensive expert this week we get to talk to. What are y'all doing best right now on offense, do you think, 
halfway through the season? Does it have to be a football answer necessarily? I, I tell you what we're doing a great job of is, is, is trusting each other. Our players trust each other right now. Um, there is not a selfish bone um, that is being exposed uh, to us as coaches and to each other as teammates. You don't just see that right now. So everybody's just focused in on doing their job and their job has a major effect on the success of a football play. And uh, nobody's sitting there worried about another man's uh, responsibility within that play right now. And because of that, we're playing uh, fast. Uh, when one dimension of our offense gets taken away, the next kind of steps up strong. And um, it's just a trust factor that we have for one another right now. And that's what's got us um, with a good rhythm right now. <clears throat> When you're playing against a team that's top 10 and defense gets to rush, do you guys kind of take that as a challenge that this is somebody that you really have to be at your best against? Absolutely. You know, uh, we, we study the strengths and the weaknesses of every opponent, and um, uh, we look at both of those as a challenge for us. So, you know, we're a football team that likes to run the football. We like to think that we have an offensive line that presents that uh, to us. You know, so uh, to sit there and say, um, that we're going to go into this football game and not run the ball because Iowa's pretty good at it. It's not real. We're, we're going to run the football. Uh, we're going to trust our offensive line to, to, to get engaged, and we're going to trust our running backs to play through contact. And, you know, we'll win some and we'll lose some. we just got to maintain the pa patience um, in that phase of the, of the offensive scheme. Just to follow up to an earlier question, what are some of the things with your midpoint of the season that you have to do better now on offense? but you're maybe not as satisfied with Well, you know, to be quite honest, I don't think that we've kind of put the, the whole um, – we haven't clicked on all cylinders just yet. You know, we haven't uh, had a game where, you know, the run completely supported the pass and the pass completely supported the run. And, you know, um, you know are we able to take the shots and are we able to still throw the ball with some type of, some type of a control – uh, in an intermediate and, and, and uh, short yardage situation. So those are things we need to continue to, to improve on is, is uh, we feel as though we still need to continue on throwing the ball uh, a little bit better. Um, I just think we need to complement this entire team a little bit better as an offense. You know, um, I think um, there are times where, you know, we're clicking on offense and mm -hmm. And, and, and that's good, and, and it may or may not be the case on the other side of the ball, and what is it that we have to do as an offense to support the other two phases of, of our team? You know, and those are things that you figure out and you don't quite have a pinpoint and answer. You know, it changes from week to week, you know, but those are things that um, I know Coach Meyer is constantly, you know, looking at the big picture and how does the offense better serve the defense? How does the defense better serve the offense and special teams in that mix as well? So those are the things that we're constantly uh, trying to figure out and can constantly improve upon. And last question, Todd. Stan, I don't know if you would agree with the premise of this based on what you've already said, but this offense at times is taken with the defense is given it. One week Absolutely. you've been a passing offense, one week you've been able to, to pound the ball. Mm -hmm. Is it tough to to adjust the identity, especially for you know running backs? I mean, when you go from a game like Northwestern where you guys were pounding the ball to maybe this week where you might have to throw it. That's a great question because you're dealing with egos. You know, you're dealing with a bunch of kids who who want to play and they want to have an effect on the game. You know, the the answer to that is is yes. You have to. Um, the good thing about the way we go about our install from day one is we can conceptually teach these players our plays. They, they learn the concept. Um, it's a whole part uh, philosophy. So we teach them the big picture, okay? And, uh, you know, my veteran backs can pretty much right now, you know, sit there and look at film, which I, I'm sure they are today, and they're looking to see what the system of, of Iowa's defense is. And they're going to see those big old, uh, big defensive linemen you know, uh, doing well at junction point, two gapping and reading. They're going to see linebackers flowing to the ball really well. They're going to see safeties, you know, uh, supporting the run. And they're going to know that in those situations that we're going to have to take some shots and throw the ball down the field. And then they're, you know, they're going to see when there's times where there's, you know, some great opportunities to run the football. So um, we try to teach them that on the front end 
I will honestly say the veterans probably get it. They, they understand what it is we need to do at given times. You know, uh, the younger guys probably have absolutely no clue. <laughs> You know, but uh, that's why we get paid as coaches. We, 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 we try to put our players in the best situation possible, and, and we take control of that, and we've got the trust of our football players right now. And last question, Bill. Yeah, uh, can you just shed some more light on Jordan Hall's situation? Sure. Yeah, Jordan Hall right now is going to practice this week. Um, he tweaked his, his knee uh, uh, a week ago in practice and uh, just didn't, did not feel, even though the he tweaked it early in the week, last week, and he made some progress. I'm sorry, not the bye week, the week before last. He made some progress on that knee and just not enough uh, for his comfort level to get out there and, and play against Northwestern. So uh, we took a week off. Um, we gained a week with the bye week, which is a bonus. He's feeling much better right now, and, and we, we have plans for him to practice this week. Thank you.